Um, right. Why is this freezing? Right. No, we lost audio and then I tried to restart it. Restart it. So I just this one here. Yep. Gary, will you, will you do the slides when I ask you to, please? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good evening. Uh, I want to welcome you to our family education night here. And uh, I want to thank uh, our presenters here tonight. Uh, we're Jamie Williams, one of our tech and uh, video, graphic, art, everything here at the high school. Okay, we have Julianne Ware back there. She is our new GIS principal. Sam Caputo, our GHS principal. Uh, Beth Drennan, uh, assistant uh, with our school uh, at the uh, GIS Prospect in terms of our positive behavior room and technology. And Carrie Brookhart, uh, back there, our GIS teacher. And, uh, Really helps have a lot more professional development. And I'm Brian O'Hara, your superintendent of our amazing Gerard City Schools. So let's first address the elephant in the room and the very difficult, difficult decision that was made yesterday uh, for our school district to go uh, remote learning for the first time. Okay. Um, in some ways, heartbreaking uh, to, uh, to all of us that are involved with this. Uh, when we weighed out the models that we were currently in, the hybrid and the e-learning model, which the e-learning model still is in existence, and weighing out the social and emotional benefits of students and the health and the consistency of teaching and learning, um, it, it was from you know, my seat and discussion with our leadership that the most safe way to do this in consistent learning was to go with our remote learning for nine weeks. Uh, variable changing in, in the case of the mass having to be worn at all times in the district uh, was different than when we had first gone to the model. Shields no longer accepted as the only uh, face shield that can be worn for our younger kids. Concern of the transitions in the upper grades, six through 12, moving students throughout the day so that when you leave that desk, someone else sits down in that desk, um, is it clean enough, has it been cleaned properly, who's cleaning it, um, et cetera. So um, that really is the bottom line of why that decision was made. One of my primary responsibilities as superintendent, your superintendent of our schools, is to maintain the safest teaching and learning environment uh, for our staff and our students. So I want you to know that that decision uh, was made through a lot of discussion, a, a lot of filtering through conscious uh, a thought uh, to go that direction. Uh, that being said, do, do you want to move on just briefly to the next slide? Of course, these are the learning models that we had designed about a month ago, and we were currently uh, on the left here in the hybrid and the e-learning on the right. And then when we designed the distance learning again, as I mentioned to you, we filter through the hidden curriculum, which is the social emotional aspect of learning, and then the curriculum, which is consistency of standards, teaching, learning, assessment, etc. Um, you can move on. So with remote learning, okay, all of this is possible for us. Um, digital mode, which you'll be learning tonight in your Google Classroom. Analog mode, aka Blizzard bag materials. It will be at times teacher led, meaning live or filmed from the teacher ourselves. And at times it will be self directed, where students will be responsible for their assignments through the Google Classroom. It gave us a wide range uh, to deliver content to our students uh, through teaching and learning. Um, next one, please. Okay. These are the results from our, sam our family survey back in uh, early July or, or late July. So we had to ask ourselves, how are we gonna address these problems to make sure we are the best that we could possibly be at remote learning or distance learning? 
So no direct instruction. How are we going to improve on our videos, filming ourselves, um, posting, etc. cetera, uh, problems with directions. And that's why you're here tonight, so that you are all involved and you understand Google Classroom, you will be part of it, you will get the updates, you will know where children are at, when assignments are given, uh, meetings, et cetera. Not enough devices. We've had a request for close to 900 devices in this district for students that did not have a device back in the spring. We are able to uh, supply those devices for our students over the next two weeks. We also have available X amount of hotspots for students that did not have internet or a device. And uh, if, you're, if you have requested, uh, we'll be in touch soon uh, to let you know how that delivery will happen. Okay, and, and you can work here, difficult in communicating with teachers. Our teachers have been given the opportunity of up to 17 hours of professional learning since last March to take advantage of. They will have 10 days of professional learning prior to going online September 8th uh, to address these issues. And uh, I'm very proud of our staff. I'm very proud of who we are. And uh, I know that we will be the best in this learning platform uh, when, when we develop. So that being said, I just wanted to address that and share with you uh, as your leader of our school district how that decision was made. So um, at this time then, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jamie Williams here, and uh, he's going to start the presentation for you. Okay, thank you. Good evening. All right, hopefully everybody can hear me good. We're going to bring up the next slides here. So my goal tonight is just to kind of get you guys through the basics of logging in. We've got people from K all the way up to 12th grade, uh, all three nights here. Uh, some of you guys are already advanced and you've already been in the videos. I heard some people playing them over there. That's great. Um, just want to explore. The biggest thing we want to stress to you is don't worry about having to write anything down and memorize everything tonight. Just remember to schools.org. We're always going to link everything up there. So as long as you can get to our website, everything is there. All right, so if you guys want to head to the next slide. So like I said, GerardCitySchools.org, we've got the student logins up there, we've got tutorial videos up there. Um, any main communication that Mr. Ayer sends out, we link all throughout on that website. All right, next slide. All right, so in front of you, you guys have uh, Google Chromebooks. I believe these are gonna be very similar to the devices that will get sent home from some students. And we're gonna try to walk you through it. So um, you've got two pieces of paper in front of you. One of which is logging into your school Google account. This is always up on the website under student and resources. Um, so we're gonna kind of go through these steps together. So right now, just let's focus on the Chromebook on the laptop in front of you. So if everybody together will move their mouse and we're gonna click on the word or we'll put the mouse over top of the word students up there. If you wanna go to the next slide. And you'll see the drop down comes down. So right now there's two things. You've got student login and resources. Go ahead and kind of click on resources. And you can go to the next slide. And so this is the resource page. We've got a couple of videos up here. I'm gonna use two of these tonight. A couple of the other ones go through what our next presenters will go through as well. So that you can review this stuff whenever you need to walk through. Um, so let's go to the next slide. All right, so just watch first and then we'll go through this step by step together. In this video, we're gonna look at logging into our school Google account. To start, let's head over to GerardCitySchools.org. Once at our website, if you look in the upper right hand corner along the menu, you'll see the word students. From there, you can go down and click on student login. On the student login page, the ShortCitySchools.org part of your email address is already put in. So you just simply have to type in the first half, which is the year you graduate, dot last name, dot first name. Next screen will give you your password. To verify that you're in your school Gmail account, simply look in the upper right hand corner and look for the G logo. This way you know that you're in your school account and not your home personal account. All right, so now let's go through that together. So if everybody wants to use the mouse, the trackpad on the computer, 
everybody should be at our district website. And all you're gonna do is move the mouse up, go to students, and then click on student login. And you should see a screen similar to this. So now if you look at the piece of paper you got, you've got a second piece of paper there that gives you a login and a password. These are just temporary ones. These are just completely made up. Now, not everybody has to walk through this, so if people want to, you just want to watch, that's fine. But it kind of helps you kind of walk through it. Because at some point, your child's going to have to log in. And they're going to type something wrong, forget something, and who do they go to? Hear their tech support. So you get the help. So you're going to type in the email that's on the piece of paper. And the emails are broke down by the year your student graduates dot their last name, dot their first name. Now you can go to google.com and log in and use Chrome, you can use Android, you can use iPhones, it works everywhere. Um, but for our purposes, we're trying to get in the habit of having your students go through our website and log in. That way the at Girard City Schools is already there, you don't run into any other issues. I teach high school, and I don't know how many times the high school kids will not type their own school name right or dot com, and they'll just go to the wrong place. So next slide. All right. So did everybody get logged in? That was a couple. If on the login to your account, then you can get that. So it's getting that. Let me see what's on the screen here. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and click on that big blue button. Since these are new accounts that were just made, we're just going to hit the accept button. So anybody that's in here that's got K through six, if you've got K through six students, you should be seeing these screens. Uh, K through six did not have emails active up to this point. They're getting engaged for this year. Because that's a nice, easy way for teachers to talk to the students and back and forth. So this will be a screen that you end up seeing if you got K through six. So all you're going to is the All right, we'll get one more minute. A couple more people logging in. You said K through six, so we're going to use this email, like for responders. Not this specific one. You're going to get one for your child. Okay. But it's just this process. You're going to see. So will they contact us on it? Uh, yes. As far as I know, yes. So most of the information from logging into the email, most of you guys should already have. You know, if you have what year is your child graduating? He's what? Fifth grade this year. So. Uh, that's where we get to do the math and count so many years up to a graduation. Uh, I have to do the same thing with high school students every day. 28 is fifth grade. Okay. So it would be 28.last name, dot first name. The passwords are always Gerard and then your lunch number or your student ID number. That way it's something that they always have access to that they all use. And if you look on this piece of paper, all the, the directions are on. All right, so once you log in, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you should see the D logo. That's how you're kind of verifying that you're in your school account. And then once you're in your school account, we're going to look at what the waffle does for the app launcher. So let's take a look at this video first and kind of explore a little bit more. Let's look at using the app launcher, or what's also known as the waffle. First thing you need to do is log into your school account, and you can verify that you're in your school account by looking for the Gerard G in the upper right hand corner. Once you've logged into your account, also almost always in the upper right hand corner is the app launcher. It's also called the waffle because it looks like a recessed waffle there with your nine dots. So we're looking right here. Once you click on it, It'll show you all of the apps that you have at your disposal. 
So all of these different apps are provided by Google, um, from drive and storage to writing documents to doing spreadsheets, email, Google Classroom, your calendar, slides, everything you need right here. What's nice is you can customize this however you want. So if you tend to use YouTube more, just click and you can drag this up and rearrange these however you like. So your app launcher and Waffle is available to you in any of these apps. So always look in the upper right hand corner in case you need to jump into another one. And simply clicking on it will launch that app into a new tab. All right, so if you want to go ahead and click on that waffle up in the corner and kind of look at some of the apps, will your child use all these apps? That depends on the, the teacher. Um, I'm a tech person, so I like to try to make my kids use as many of those as they possibly can so that when they get to other classes, they have some exposure to them. Um, who's back there, Beth? Okay. Oh, um, if you want to bring up the website, Like get out of the yeah. yeah, I got one other link I want to show you guys. I the website? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so on our website, the one other thing I forgot to add, uh, we just added it today. If you go up to the administration tab, if you have not signed up for School Messenger, there's a link in a form now for that. That link is also on our main website. So if you haven't got the text messages or the all calls from uh, Mr. Hare. That's where you want to go sign up for that sort of thing. All right, so let's go back up to the tab where our website is. All right, so um, actually go to Google. Go where? Uh, Google. So we're going to go up to the app launcher, and collectively we're all going to do this because we're going to go into Google Classroom next and look at some of the features. And then you're going to look down through the apps and look for the ones called Google Classroom. So once you're there, uh, this is where I think who's taking over next? Beth? Yeah. Okay. So she's going to take over next. So you guys have a screen that we have the classroom. If you want to come up and say that on the mic. Okay. Okay, did everybody get to the classroom? You picked a person and all of that. It doesn't matter what you pick, no. This is just a sample account. So it's asking you, you should see the sample classroom, and it says join, correct? So go ahead and join that sample classroom. Your students will have the same thing, but they will have many more classrooms than what you've seen. You only saw one, they'll have one for every subject. Except K through two. K through two will probably only have one Google Classroom. Okay, is everybody in Google Classroom? Okay, so we're gonna go through all of the steps of Google Classroom. The first thing in Google Classroom, is right here is where your class name is. Does everyone see that? And then you have three parts. You have stream, classwork, and people. The stream is where all the announcements are. So you can see all the announcements from the teachers. Everyone see that? So if you click on classwork, this is where you're gonna see all of your students' assignments. This view your work button right here, if you click that, it shows you all of your assignments and what's missing, what's assigned, and what's graded and returned. You can also see that over here if you click on any of these buttons. And you guys feel free to click on any of those and see the different views from your point also.
to get back to the view we were in, we're just gonna click sample classroom again, and we'll be right back in that view. Go ahead and click on classwork. And go ahead and click on this assignment right here, the ELA Simple Solutions. There's two ways you can enter an assignment. Oh, it's okay. You can click on this document here and it'll just open for you. And here's your assignment. So all you have to do is scroll down. You can type, it's a completely editable document. Up here, if you look, it should say parent user. It should say your name here. So after you finish this assignment, all you have to do, well, so type something in the document because you can't turn it in blank. So type something in there somewhere. And then this turn in button is all you have to do to turn it in. Any questions on how to turn in an assignment like that? Everybody good? Okay. Okay, so let's go down. Let's hit this view assignment. You can also see it from there. This just gives you more detail. And actually this one's already graded and returned. So you can go into that and see the grade that this person got right there. Does everyone see that? And you can also resubmit. If your teacher asks you to resubmit, you can open the document, type more in it, and resubmit it. Okay, go ahead and hit that turn in. Let's go back to classroom view. So we're just gonna click on the class name and then classwork. All right, let's go down to the grammar one. Uh, current event, go ahead and go to that one. So do you see how this says missing right here? I made the due date before today so that you guys can see what a missing assignment looked like. If you click on view assignment right here, this just has, please use an online news source to find a current event, create a document to answer these questions. So do you see how there was no document in this area? What you're gonna do is go up and click on this plus sign all of your documents are right here. So you can click on any, if you want a slide, if you want a doc, a sheet is like a spreadsheet, and then drawings. So if you click on any one of those, it will open up with your name, it will attach to this assignment, and it will also, you have to go, this, when you do it this way, oh, there is still a turn in button, okay. So as long as you type something, you can hit the turn in button here as well. Can you jump back to that last screen, this one? If you don't hit the turn in button on the dock, you can also hit the turn in button right here. It does the same thing. Okay. Are we good with that type of assignment in Google Classroom? Can you go back to when you first see the red word missing? Um, yes. That was on a different, you know what? I'm gonna go there again at the end. Is that okay? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show a couple of different ways at the end. Yes. It didn't have it. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, go back to sample classroom and go back to classwork. And, okay, go up to view assignment. So you're missing this add or create over here, but you're missing. Um, try and scroll over on the bottom of your screen. It's probably easier with your arrows. Maybe your screen is too big.
Oh, okay. I see. Um, Ms. Burkhardt, can you go back one? Sample classroom, classwork. Okay. So she was just looking right here. Do you see how you can't see anything in here of the assignment? So for these types of assignments, you want to go into view assignments. You want to actually click that. That brings this up. It brings that up on every assignment. So if you just get in the habit of going into view assignment, it's the same thing. It's just more, more information. Okay. And this is step-by-step -step on Bird City Schools also um, in a PDF. Okay. Let's go back to sample classroom again. And classwork. And let's go to verbs and adverbs. Okay, can we go to view assignment again? Okay, so this one, I know that most of you have seen Study Island, Khan Academy, those kind of assignments. Well, there's really no way to link it directly to Google Classroom. So what you will see is a link here that if you click, will take you right to Study Island. But there's no way to turn in from Study Island or Khan Academy or any um, of the other apps. So what you're going to do is you would go into Study Island and turn in, do your work, do everything, and then come back to your verbs and hit mark as done. So your teacher knows that it is there. You don't have to attach anything. She just knows to go to Study Island to check the assignment is done. Okay, so that's as simple as Mark is done there. Is everybody okay with that thing? Okay, let's go back to sample classroom again. And classwork. Uh, let's go down to math lesson 1.2. I think that is the exact same time uh, view assignment. So once again, it's over here. And you're just gonna, mm, Go ahead, click there, and it opens up again. Okay, everybody okay with that? All right, there's one more I wanna show you. Lesson 1.2, or no. Yeah, back to sample classroom, classwork. And uh, let's go to how are you feeling about math lesson 1.3. So this is what also the teachers can do. They can just post a question right in so you can answer any of these questions and then it's done you don't have to hit turn it oh there it is turn it there at the bottom so that's another type of thing that they can put on the class and then let's go down to the science quiz yep go ahead I'm sure most of you have seen these forms now since we've had to fill them out quite a few times through the website. The teachers can also do these on Google Classroom and it will actually lock your student's Chromebook so they cannot go to any other sites while they're doing the quiz. There is a attachment in there, okay? Are we good on the type of lessons for Google Classroom? Does anybody need any of those looked at again? Okay, so let's go to how you can manage your students' work because we know that's very hard to do. So there's three different ways that you can see it in Google Classroom. The first way is right here for view your work. And we looked at that briefly. You can see this is missing. This is assigned. This is turned in, turned in. This is graded, but it also shows you that it was done late. Do you see that? And assigned. Over here, you can hit all, assigned, returned, or missing. You can click any of those. Okay. Oh, uh, one more thing, Ms. Brooker. Can you click on, well, I didn't leave any comment. Click right there on lesson 1.2. If your teacher left you any comments, it would be right here. I didn't leave a comment on that one, I'm sorry. Yep, and it would come up right here for that. You can also go back into your doc and the comments show on the side. Uh, private comments are over here. Those will go straight to the teacher and those are in every one of your assignments. 
These are only shown to the teacher. This is shown to everyone. So if you post anywhere that says class comments, anybody in the class can see your comments. So if you want to privately talk to the teacher, you want to do it right here. See how Ms. Burkhardt just wrote, I need help. So that would, that sent an email to the teacher that says, you have a comment, someone needs help. Yes. So if the teacher private, if the teacher comments to a student on their assignment, it is private. It is private. If it's on anywhere, if it's on like under, okay, stay under the stream, like right here. You have to share with your class. <laughs> there you go. This is not private. So if you're on the stream and you start talking, that's not private. If you look on your screen now, you can see that. The same thing if you comment underneath an announcement, it's not private either. That is seen for everyone. So the only private place is in an assignment. When you go to that view assignment screen, let's go there, let's work our classwork. Uh, so you have to go down here to view assignment, right? There you go. See over here where it's private comments? And this will be, you'll, you should be able to see this in your screen also. The private comments are over here. Now, on the stream, the teacher can, uh, well, Ms. Burkhardt will show you that, about how she can go to just one student on the stream, but it will say your name here. It will not say um, that it's to the whole class. It'll just say one student. Okay, the other two ways to see what you're doing and manage your assignments is Google Calendar up here. You can just ask me later on that. So, all of your Google assignments for every single class you have will show up in here. You can actually click on the assignment it takes you right to the assignment. You don't even have to go back to Google Classroom. It will take you right to the assignment. Let's go back over to calendar. Um, there is up here a week view, a month view, and a day view. Basically, we wouldn't be using the year view. But if you click on the month view, you can see that's one that is, oh, it is it's linked to Ms. Burkhardt's regular account too. Sorry, so we're looking, we're checking out her Google Calendar. So yeah, so here's the ones for the classroom. The lighter color means that you missed them or didn't turn them in. The darker color means that they're not due yet. So you can click on any of these assignments. Each Google Classroom will come in in a different color and go right there and see it. Does everyone understand the calendar view? I don't understand how to get to that original page. I'm sorry. I was it's okay. That shows the child's name on all their assignments. Okay, I will show you that again. Let's go back to classwork. View your work. It's right here under classwork. See that? Okay. The last trick, and I just learned this one, I think that this might be my favorite view. If you click on the three lines right here and go to down to the to-do list, it says to-do. If you go down to here, it actually will show you every single one of your classes. You can select all classes here, or you can do a drop down and go to just one classroom. It shows you when everything is due. Once again, I believe that you can click on that, Ms. Burkhart, and go to the assignment. Yep, it takes you right to the assignment from there. Um, the other view with that is also the done view. So you can see everything that is done. The to-do only shows you what's not done. This might be my favorite view, I think 
because it's in a list, it's right there, you don't have to look at a calendar. You can also use this button to get to the Google Calendar. The calendar, when you go this way though, does not give you the week month view. You can only get the week. So dependable on how much out you need to plan. Um, I think that's it for Google Classroom. Ms. Brooker, did I get everything? Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Um, so will they have to be logged in at a certain time, like for each class, or is it just they have to do what's on this to do? Um, is Mr. O'Hara still in here? She wanted to know if they would have to be logged in at a certain time for each class or how that's going to work. No, we're working on that flexibility now. We understand we have to be flexible on that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know the principles. You want to comment more on that? I do not. I do know that there are going to be times where there's going to be either child care, those kind of things. But most of that would be posted uh, in the Google Classroom, and they would access when they are available at that time on that day. So for accountability, we're looking at time on task. So, if we, so for accountability, we're kind of looking at time on task. So we kind of have a format of maybe it's a 35 to 40 minutes of math if we were school-based and that's what we would expect daily and accumulate it weekly so my understanding is maybe you didn't get to that 45 in the morning etc you got to it at night maybe something happened you got caught up on the thursday and am i speaking correctly principles for what your expectations are okay um, so that uh, we, we don't exactly have a scheduled asynchronous we call it Live from the teacher every day, you got to be in at 10. Correct? Okay. But there will be certain times that a teacher will Zoom during the week uh, for catch up on uh, interventions, questions, etc. Mr. Caputo, is that, am I out of the, the lane there? Or no, not? absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm yelling so that they can hear me on the, on the black feed. Okay. So you want to change the mic? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, it's fine. Uh, no, the uh, work, we're currently working out a schedule, uh, and I'm just speaking from 712 uh, on behalf of myself, Mrs. Santangelo. Uh, we're currently working out a schedule where certain days of the week at certain times, uh, for example, first period would Zoom at this time, second period would Zoom at this time. Um, so there will be some of those, but then those will be recorded for the kids who don't have the opportunity to be live. We'll still be able to um, we'll still be able to access that content. And so other times that we're calling office hours, okay, we're still not 100 percent sure of what the uh, what the exact schedule will be. But we'll also have office hours so kids know, hey, if I can one on one Zoom with my teacher at that time, or if I can email my teacher at that time, or I can call my teacher at that time, whatever works, uh, that'll be what uh, we will have a set schedule for that for those things to occur. Okay. Yes. We're working on that right now in terms of our services for our students uh, that are on an IEP. As to uh, by law, when can we maybe transition them back a little bit for some of their services, whether it's OT, PT, um, et cetera. So uh, we'll, we'll need a few weeks on that. Our, our special ed uh, director, Jessica Crumpack, is going 24 7 on that. And if you know Jessica, you know where her heart is. And uh, she, she wants to make sure that those services are provided to the best of our ability. Um, so that's just be patient until we can work out schedules to see how that could work. Okay. Great question. Yes. Mr. Caputo. Um, Well, there are um, the, the short answer is yes. It won't be assumed every day. Sometimes it'll be pre-recorded lessons. Okay, okay and it'll depend on. Um, basically, what, and this 
is where I, I'll be for you also. What we're really kind of talking, what we're, we've been kind of discussing with teachers is if it's a lecture, like I'm showing you a lesson, that would be pre recorded. If it's an interactive thing, you know, where, you know, I, I ask, like, in, I have a history teacher. Okay, so I want you all to watch this 20 minute video. And then tomorrow in our Zoom meeting, we're going to discuss it or debate it or something like that. Um, every content we, uh, will, will look a little bit different. Um, but essentially, one of the best practices we talk about is the um, I do, we do, we do model. If we're I doing, that should be pre recorded so kids can watch it at their leisure. If we're we doing, over over. yes, yeah, you can watch it more than once Um If we're we doing, you know, working together, that should be in the Zoom. Okay, so but, but long story, but again, to get back to the original point, there will be a, a, a preset schedule. Okay, okay. something like that. And we're still kind of looking at the change, but, but I think I think we're pretty close to have a a, a break up front and we'll do it up. So, just so those that are uh, watching right now, the question was uh, will, will there be a continuous schedule um, every day set for when a teacher would be live? And the response was that there would be, uh, they would, may not experience every one of their teachers every day, but they would experience some of their teachers each day. And, and uh, as a general rule across, okay, uh, grades there. And, uh, you know, Mr. Caputo explained about the I do part of, of the lesson was when the teacher kind of introduces the concepts, the we do, that we interact with what was introduced, and then, of course, the you do uh, part where the student would be self-directed, try it, and uh, see where the success lies with that. So those opportunities uh, will be with the I do, we do, the I do, um, we do, you do. Different resources will be available for those different levels. Okay, thank you. I do have to say, I gotta welcome uh, Ms. Jen Smith to, to uh, our group here too. She's a high school teacher for us and she uh, is always uh, coming to bat when we need her. So thanks Ms. Smith. Okay, any other questions? on Google Classroom, on how to operate it. Yes. What if your child, what? Okay, if your child doesn't know their lunch number, I'm, what grade? Okay, we can get that for you without a problem. And I think that we will have something going home that has all of their passwords, all of their logins, everything, because they're gonna need their logins for Study Island. They're gonna need their logins for Khan Academy. So I am positive that Mrs. Ware has that under control and we will get that out, okay? She might know her lunch number and just not think that it's her lunch number because they do put it in every day if they buy lunch. Uh, so she forgot it because of the fingerprints. It, it's, it's, as you can see logging in today, it's a lot for the kids, and especially when they're trying to do it from home in the at GerardCitySchools.org isn't there. Because at school, they do what you did. They just do their class year, dot last name, dot first name. So they don't realize that it's actually there on the email when they're logging in. So it, it's a big jump, you know. Okay, any other Google Classroom questions? Will the information be like all of our relations and email out to the parents? I'm guessing that that's going to be on um, the principal's call that goes home to the parents on how to get your login information. Yeah. Be on the calls. They'll, they'll direct that on the calls. I don't know that they're that far yet. So, but we will get it to you. Any other questions? Is everybody comfortable with Google Classroom now? Do you see? And there is a PDF step by step of what we did, numbered, lettered on Gerard City Schools. And Mr. Williams also has videos on there 
and it's probably much easier to listen to him than me. So there you go. Okay, Ms. Brooker. Your All right, we'll give Mrs. Drennan a second to get back to me on the laptop. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Karen Rupert. I am a sixth grade language arts and social studies teacher at Gerard Intermediate School. So I just want to really briefly show you a couple of things from the teacher side of Google Classroom so that you know things are going through. So Mrs. Drennan, if you can go to, go to grades. So on my screen, I can see all of my students, who has missing work, who's turned things in, who's resubmitting things. So if teachers are emailing a student and saying, hey, Johnny, you didn't turn this in, uh, don't let Johnny lie to you and say, yes, I did. Because if we're reaching out, it's because we're missing a grade here. Okay, can you go to, go to classwork, and let's go to that math lesson that I was commenting on, 1.2, I think. And then, can you go, yeah. And then, can you find me? Okay, so on my screen, if a student has left me a message, that pops up for me so I can see it. And I also get a direct email that someone has left me a comment. So if you open that up, Mrs. Drennan, and then you can reply. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then that becomes a private conversation between me and the student. No one else in the class is seeing that. So it's a little private chat room. I don't know if y'all remember chat rooms from back in the day. Okay. Um, can you go back to sample classroom and go to people? The other thing that teachers can do, and some do this, some do not, it just depends on your child's teacher, is we can invite the guardian to be part of the classroom. And we just do that by entering your email. And what we can do from there is send you a weekly summary of the progress. So this um, for Mrs. Dren's son, who goes to TCTC. So you can see things that are due in the coming week. You can see the announcements that have been posted on the class stream. You can see that Riley has submitted some work here, so that's good, stand on track. So more announcements. So it just keeps you in the loop of what's been going on. Did I miss anything, Mrs. Drennan? No, um, only the draft does all of your classes Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so this shows all the Google Classrooms that your child has enrolled in, in one fell swoop. Okay, is there anything else that I was supposed to talk about on this, Mrs. Drennan? I don't think so. Um, oh yeah, there was one thing. Can you go back to classwork? Sometimes instead of uploading assignments, which look like a little clipboard, teachers can upload a material, which looks like this. And those can just be reference guides to things um, or links to different docs. So they're not necessarily for a grade. So this brings me to the next part of our presentation, which is the Gerard City Schools Approved Remote Learning Tools. So this is also on the Gerard City Schools webpage. And I am by no means going to go over every single one of these because I know it's overwhelming. These are just some common apps that the teachers will be using this year. Not every teacher will use every app. Some of these are geared more to K3. 
Some of them are geared more to 712. So it really depends on the teacher and what they're going to be using. Every teacher will be using Google Classroom. That's why we felt it was so important to get you in here and show you how to use that. Some teachers will use YouTube. We don't have to open that. Um, some teachers will be creating YouTube channels where they're going to post videos of their lessons and keep it all on a YouTube channel. Anything that's in Google Suites, so Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, uh, Google Sites, that's the Google version of websites, those are all fair game. We are a G Suite district, so most of our materials come from here. Some other apps, um, we have Pear Deck, which is an interactive website with the teacher, but the teacher can see student responses, but the students can't see each other's responses. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Edpuzzle is amazing. I just started playing around with it. Um, there's educational videos on literally everything. So your teacher, the, your child's teacher might assign an Edpuzzle video for them to watch. Um, Nearpod is similar to Pear Deck. Um, so those are some learning apps we might be using. Communication. Um, some teachers have Remind accounts set up so that you can get a text message on your phone or you can download the Remind app, it's free. And then we did talk about Zoom already. And then Edgenuity, which that's a different meeting. Um, that's our third party platform for those students who have chosen distance learning. Naviance is new for our high schoolers to promote college and career readiness. Study Island is pretty common. I can tell you with the K-6 building at least, if you scroll down. And then we use MobyMax, uh, Renaissance Learning, and Accelerated Reader we use to progress monitor students in reading and math especially. And then we have Learning A to Z, Raz Kids, those are more for the younger grades for reading and vocabulary. Um, PEG writing is used a lot at the intermediate building, especially. It gives instantaneous feedback on student writing, and then teachers can go in and comment. It's wonderful. And then we have Hexsprout, which is another reading website. Khan Academy, News ELA, Common Lit, ReadWorks, these are all depending on your teacher. Um, and then Quizlet, um, that's a great way for students just to practice terms. Kahoot is a fun website with games. And then in terms of communication, um, now that we've enabled email K-12, to every student has an email account, Zoom, and Mrs. Drennan showed you where to sign up for the school messenger, and Mr. Williams did too, which is on the school website. So this is posted. Feel free to click on any of those links to investigate those websites further. And your teacher will provide logins if you need a login. So don't stress, we'll have that for you. Any questions about that very brief overview? Yes. So the question is if you want to be a guardian on the Google Classroom, that would be teacher initiated based on if they're going to use that feature. Other questions? All right, that means you're either really overwhelmed or I did a good job. Thank you. Who am I turning this back to? Mr. Williams, Mr. O'Hara, Bueller. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions at this time? Uh, we plan to go to 7.30. I know the presentations I went through. Um, but now's the time. If there's something on your mind in terms of uh, what we went through, you want to stay, you want to work on it a little bit, go back through, log in again, go to the classroom. Do the, yes. Um, so you said about the Chromebooks. We'll get like a set date. We can come pick Chromebooks up. For yes, you will. Yeah, our goal is to get that information out. Um, early the week of the 31st, if not earlier. So, um, I have another question. 
Sure. This isn't about like it's about um, sports. So our youngest son plays basketball. Do you know if they're going to still play? Well, or do according we to our play? governor today, everything is is forward with our with our uh, ball sports currently uh, in terms of some restrictions and gave permission uh, to schools to to move on to the spring if they want to schedule. But uh, in terms of our winter sports. Uh, this is actually a dead period until the end of August, and I anticipate that uh, we would go back to preseason uh, workouts under the conditions that were set in the summertime with a limited number of groups, and et cetera. That's, that would be my anticipation, uh, as much as we can stay involved. You know, the question comes a lot, you know, well, you're remote teaching, but we still have sports going on, and that's a little unsettling at times to, to some people, and I, I can understand that. However, that group is outside right now. We're spread out outside over 100 yards, and they're a contained group in a bubble, more or less. The football team's been together since June and doing well, and some of the other teams. Not that we haven't had hot spots. Our kids had to isolate for a while, temperatures went up, et cetera. Uh, as compared to bringing 300 kids into a building uh, for X amount of hours uh, and different transitions happening at that time, uh, it's kind of where that's at, I guess, in our school district. So, yes. Okay, the question was, how would a parent, I guess, monitor the work or get into the classroom? Is that correct? Okay, could someone come up and respond to that so that those that are listening also would have the same answer? Um, I just started using, using Google Classroom about six months ago myself, so I don't want to be doing correctly. All right, so my son, I, I live in Austin, my kids go to Austin Town, and my son was in fifth grade last year. So I did both. I would check uh, the emails, I would get a weekly summary, and it would say this is missing. So then I'd say, all right, let's go log in. And you want to log in right along with your student, so you can see what they're seeing and kind of go right through it. So the only way you're going to see exactly what they're seeing is logging in through their account. Um, it's it, to me that's the best thing to do as a parent is log in right next to them and see what they're doing. And then we're going to do some in services with the teachers on how to pre-enroll the students and how to invite all the guardians or parents so that uh, the emails that you use to choose what your school plan was that's the one we're going to use to uh, invite you to get all your updates for the classroom. That answer that so, so the parents would get Jamie if I'm saying correctly, then the parents would be receiving an email to be invited yep. to their child's classroom. Yep. yep. Okay. And we are working uh, collaboratively with our teachers to streamline those classrooms as much as possible. So can we get one classroom for you know fourth grade e e ELA or math, etc. So uh, we don't have uh, uh, you know a bundle of information coming to you through different um, emails, notifications, etc. So whenever possible, and, and really our staff has been communicating a lot in that area as how do we streamline the information to our parents at grade levels and the disciplines. Okay. Yes. Do you think that's going to be evaluated? We'll start to evaluate. I'm thinking probably around week six or seven see where we're going to be at. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the evaluation process now, I'm thinking about what we call the hidden curriculum, which is, you know, the socio-emotional interaction and, and safety uh, compared to standards and teaching methods. You know, um, right now, safety just overruled the, uh, the hidden curriculum aspect of it. But when we would cross that bridge, I think in six or seven months, we're going to be pretty good about remote learning. And, and we know that we have school-based learning down. So a lot of it will weigh in on the variables of where we're at with, with, our, with our health situation uh, in our city and in our county, et cetera. Currently, we're in, I think, a, um, an orange situation. You know, wise. Uh, I think that's between maybe uh, you know, above 50 cases per 100,000. You know, if we can get it down to that yellow or that green in that time, well, we have a lot more confidence than uh, bringing people in and not having the, the tracing uh, chaos that we would have to probably do with students as to their first person, they were in X amount of classes, 
and they have the mask on all the time, who do they interact with, who needs to be quarantined, and, and of course with our employees also. Okay, anything else at this time? How about a hand for our presenters tonight? I think they did a great job. And I can't express enough of myself and, and our staff here today, our gratitude for you taking the time uh, to get this knowledge base. It's an introduction. We'll have to make a lot of mistakes with it, just like we all do. Uh, but always feel free to uh, contact uh, our Gerard City Schools, the principals, and my office uh, with any questions or concerns, okay? All right. That being said, anything for the good of the order here? Okay. If you'd like to stay and, and work a little bit, we'll be here floating around uh, to help you out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, we have a question? Oh, yeah. oh, oh we're, we're okay. People leaving, I apologize. Uh, with CDC guidelines, we have to have like entrance only and exit only. So we'll go out through the store to the left and then out by the van. We can run through with the building and out front. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, we are Gerard. Family, taking care of each other. When your problem child asks you a question.